And welcome to another edition of the Elvis Deep Dive. I'm your host, Brent Arnold. This is where I take presentations from the Ultimate Elvis Channel by Leon in cooperation with Leon Smith and deliver commentary and analysis for these videos. So I'm going to be stopping the video frequently. I suggest that you please go and check out Leon's original presentation. First, it's uninterrupted, then come back here for the analysis. In the video today, it's this is really exciting. A new series by Leon called From Rehearsal to the Stage, The Great Medley, Little Sister, Get Back. Let's do this. Okay, just to give some people context who may not know about the facts and folklore regarding this era here, Elvis was preparing for his third Vegas engagement in 1970, and this was some of the MGM rehearsal footage here. Um, what Leon did is there's uh, some great audio here mixed in from the That's the Way It Is Deluxe Edition. And so we're sitting in for the rehearsal, Elvis in front of the cameras, because uh, just about under two weeks later, Elvis would be performing his opening show there at uh, the International Hotel. So this is a filmed rehearsal footage. Uh, this is the 29th, as it said here on the screen. And so lock and load, here we go. Little sister, don't want you kiss me once or twice. You say it's very nice and then you're wrong. Little sister, don't you do what your big sister does. I really like the staging of this visually. I mean, I know we're here to analyze the music, but we're watching these people kind of in a semicircle with Elvis being prominently placed in the center. And so there really gives a feeling, not only in an audio way, but in a visual way, there's total cohesion here. This is a, this is really one of the best Elvis periods ever. And you really kind of feel it in both ways here. Uh, not only that, but taking a, a Beatles song and fusing it with one of his best post-Army rockers, you have a great combination. And uh, of course, this combination of this medley worked until uh, they quit doing it after about 73. Then after that, Little Sister was delivered as a standalone kind of offering. But what we're seeing here is that awesome pocket of time with one of the best medleys ever. And uh, you just can't get enough of the way that Elvis is sitting in his chair, not only looking comfortable, but having fun with it, but also really kind of marshalling his forces to put together one of the best things that they will ever do with this engagement coming up. Well, I dated a yogi sister And I took her to a show I went for some candy, the long came jumped at me, and they stuck right out the door. Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? Little sister. Okay, if you think about, not that we're comparing this to the master of Little Sister, but just to give some more context. Um, the original Little Sister studio master, very pristine in its sound here. And they have a very good quality here, but they're kind of going for a little more 1970 raw and gritty, mixed with the kind of polish that you would expect from Elvis and the best musicians on earth, uh, the TCB band. But yet you could tell it, it kind of has a little more rough around the edges kind of take. And you could really feel that they're taking the old and bringing it into the new here. Especially when you think of Little Sister representing pre-1964 Beatles Invasion and then Get Back representing the late 60s in its most purest form. Uh, you really do get kind of a great little melding thing going on here. Oh. Little 
sister, don't you do Shock the hell out of me Well, I used to pull your pigtail And pinch your turn my nose You've been a-growing And baby, it's been showing From your head down to your clothes Listen to that transition there. That that speaks of the rawness that I was talking about. Get down to your it's beautifully not pretty. And that's what they were going for. They were really trying to tap into the kind of rough exterior that that time period showed. Raw and gritty was kind of the new style of the day. And... Um, they were making it their own. They weren't trying to keep up with the Joneses musically. They were taking, which Elvis is a genius at. He's always been able to incorporate other aspects of music that was either previously done or presently done and making it his own so it's different than him just simply adapting another style. Who says to don't you? Who says to don't you? I always love any shot that has Elvis and Ronnie within the same frame because not that he didn't have such synergy with all the other players, but there was something about him and Ronnie that they were almost just connected cosmically or something. And it just it's a very awesome treat to see that. And we're just so glad for any footage that we're able to see here. And uh, also kudos to Leon for inserting available footage with actual footage, just really putting together a great thing, making him not only my friend, but I will say this, the greatest Elvis curator out there. Take it back. Take it back to where you want to belong. Now that is a shot right there. Why they didn't leave that, uh, take, take that and not put it on the cutting room floor and inserted that into the movie. And of course, um, the movie didn't, the original release did not play this all the way through. So we're really getting a, a bonus here with that. <laughs> hey, get back. Hey. All right, watch how he jokes about Jojo lost his ass, and then within two seconds, he's just passionately rolling out with get back. Some people can't engage in levity and then bounce right back into that earnest professionalism the way Elvis can. So just watch this. <laughs> He's right back to business. Okay, wait. If you notice, in a couple shots, Charlie had a cigarette in his mouth, but then he doesn't in another one. Let's investigate. Cigarette. Does he have in his mouth? There? It didn't look like it, but maybe he was just turned to the side. See, I'm always trying to look for conspiracies and everything. <laughs> I think he was just turned too far to the other side. To me, Jerry always had like that John Entwistle kind of thing where powerful bass being played, but really making it look easy and effortless. Not a showboater by any sense of the mean. The music speaks for itself. He doesn't have to gesticulate or do anything. An interesting compared to the Beatles where they played Billy Preston's keyboard 
um, an original melody that he came up for uh, his keyboard solo. They're just playing a rock version of the melody to the verse. Oh, yeah, bye. I went for some candy, along came Jim Dandy, and they snuck right out the door. Sister. Okay, rightly so, we are mega focused on Elvis. He is delivering the goods with kind of a ferocity that is channeled by only the gods of worlds yet to be discovered. But yet, if you go back, listen to Ronnie's little fill there. Little things sometimes say a lot. You know, the, the whisper that roared. And I took her to a show. I went for some candy. Along came Jim Dandy and they snuck right out the door. I mean, there is just so much there within those couple seconds. Little sister. Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you kiss me once or twice? Say it's very nice and then you go. Oh, Mr. Burton, you are killing me. Sister, don't kiss me once or twice. Say it's very nice and then you go. Sister, don't you do what you face. Sister, don't you do what you I think what was so great about the Beatles Get Back is just it's kind of down-home raw kind of flavor. But I think McCartney's vocals were way too smooth for that kind of song. And we see it as evidenced here that Elvis's voice services that kind of, as great as it is, no disrespect to Paul, but what Elvis is doing here is is vocal style fits this kind of song a lot better than Paul's did. I always thought that either Lennon or um, Harrison should have recorded the vocals for Get Back. Uh, you can't change history though, can you? But uh, so Elvis, this is a great pairing of one of Paul's great compositions with Elvis's voice. The closest you'll ever get to that great kind of collaboration that never did happen. Get back, hey, get back, get back to where you want. Not only is Elvis having fun, but you really get the sense he is in control here. Now, sometimes the best artist out there could be overwhelmed by other circumstances surrounding stressors, but Elvis is riding a wave of total equanimity here. No doubt about it, my friends.
Give him a little uh, stool. Leon is not only the greatest curator out there, just one hell of an editor. Um, okay, when people ask me what are the couple of saddest things about Elvis's life, to me, I list it as number one, his death. I mean, that, that goes without saying. And I would say number two, turning one of the greatest show pieces ever filmed. I'm not just talking about ever filmed for Elvis, but almost ever filmed by an artist on stage. And not even giving it the respect of including it in either of the That's the Way It Is editions. Making this kind of obscure. Maybe that's what adds to the mystery about this. Why they didn't continue to engage in this sit-down segment kind of style. Uh, in subsequent shows, it's beyond me, but here's just part of one of the greatest moments ever in Elvis Presley history and why it has been, you know, they've relegated it to this kind of lost treasure buried in the desert that we have to seek. It it just is, is kind of sad, and a lot of people for many years didn't even get to hear this, so... Um, it was a treat. I think it was, what, 1980 or something like that, 81? When it was able, when people were able to first uh, access this, uh, at least via audio. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Give my little uh, stool over here for a second. Do I? Hang loose. We're I got to say, everybody has different opinions, but to me, out of the that's the way it is portion of that engagement at the International, I, I'm sorry, August 12th, midnight. Um, not that the others were not killer in their own way. This was killer on steroids. Anything, you're feeling lonely. Sorry, baby, I don't care. <laughs> This has always been another bugaboo. This would have always worked perfect in the future. It would have given Elvis a chance to sit down because God knows the kind of shoes and boots that he wore must have been incredibly painful on his feet. Uh, and not only that, but I think, uh, as evidenced in the 68 special, that sitting down and singing to the audience does create an extra element of intimacy with the people you're trying to connect with. Honey, I wouldn't come out there again for a love and the money, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, I've listened to this concert about over 100, 200 probably times, and, you know, I'm always listening to the MP3s and stuff like that, but every now and then you got to just go back to this footage and just watch Elvis' expressions because that it's just so priceless. When I was in the Army, a uh, record came out by me. No, just when I got out of the Army. A uh, record came out by me. Uh, what the hell was it? Oh, yeah, it's called uh, Little Sister. One like this. You don't buy it, man. No, uh, it's up there. Hot oh, damn, boy, there it is. <laughs> And I know that a lot of people might sit there and nitpick going, well, they should have all had this stuff tested and all that. No, sometimes that's the magic of these live shows. The fact is, hey, can you adjust my mic or any of that? It, it, because you know what? You're seeing kind of an otherworldly presence, but with these kind of real life little mechanical things that we have to deal with, it also brings it down to earth. The sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you kiss me once or twice and say it's very nice and then you run? Little sister, don't you do what your big sister does? Mind you, this is not uh, only the first time this medley was performed live. This is the first time anyone who went to see Elvis live got to hear Little Sister. Well, I took her to a 
hearing a little bit more restraint from um, the TCB band naturally of course because the studio was kind of more of a kind of roughneck environment where they were able to have fun with it kind of hang loose a little bit uh, so they're playing a little more restrained on this though still dynamic in their own way but we're also getting treated to background vocalists we're hearing the sweets come in with uh, Millie and stuff like that I wait I think I hear Millie in it you know, I th we, we don't always have the most trained ears that we'd like to think we have. So I'm thinking I'm hearing her in the mix. Uh, either way, um, what a, a treatment this is and how they looked at this footage and said, eh, we're going to not put this in the movie. What were you thinking? Back to where you want me. You gotta love letter P here. Used to pull your pigtail. See when you don't put out one of those little uh, popper blocker things that uh, you really hear the P's accentuate. In this case, I think it worked masterfully. Showing from your head down to your toe Little sister, don't you Little sister, don't you Little sister, don't you kiss me once or twice And say it's very nice and then you run Little sister, don't you do what your big sister Now we're hearing another layer added here because if you're listening to this wind down or this final thrust before the wind down actually you're you're really hearing some gospel finding its way in here. So think of the tone of it what we've heard. We've kind of heard a like I said before a kind of uh unchiseled kind of raw bravado here. But we're going to hear the gospel thing kind of creep in and it's beautiful. Sister, don't you do what your big sister do? Hey, get back, hey, get back, get back to where you want to belong. Now, if you had no knowledge of the Beatles ever or Elvis or any of that, and you just played this for an alien who just got off of their craft and they had a limited understanding of music, they would say, Well, this sounds like a fusion between, uh, Bluesish kind of rockabilly, kind of uh, a little bit of soul, a little bit, uh, and then gospel. It's all of it. Glenn, you are a god among men. I want you to. Let go of focusing on everything else right now and just listen. Glenn humbly working those ebonies and ivories and also kind of being cognizant that Glenn is an underrated arranger on stage. 
a musical mastermind. Where you won't belong. So you really are listening to Glenn also kind of adding in a little layer of boogie. smile at the end oh my god sit up for this edition of the elvis deep dive i want to thank mr leon smith for curating the best elvis library out there support his channel not only by viewing his videos and subscribing but also sharing his videos with your friends online because if they have not been subjected to leon's efforts then they are sadly being deprived of a great experience and, and thank you to all of you who are being supportive of this series and uh hey we love doing what we're doing it's our it's just in us it, it's part of our great insanity to dive into this stuff and i wouldn't have it any other way thank you so much everybody get your piece of the piece and always remember tcb Sister, don't you do shock the hell out Yeah.